بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وأعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا ذلك الفوز العظيم صدق الله العظيم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the time when he was immigrating from Mecca to Medina Munawwara we all know that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم at that time spent three days in a cave called Ghar Thawr, the cave of Thawr. During these three days, there was a person that was going every day to the cave, providing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu with the food. And when the three day period was over and they were about to leave, the very same person went to the cave. And gave them food for them to take with them during the journey. A lot of time when we talk about the hijrah, we forget about this person who was do doing this unique job and in such a way that people were not able to follow the footprints of the person. This person would go in the darkness of the night and after coming back will send a shepherd with the goats to walk on the same route that will erase the footprints of this person. I don't know if you can recall the name of this person. Our history is very rich. And there are so many great people that many times we don't pay attention to and don't learn our lessons from. This person was Asma radiyallahu anha, the daughter of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu. Who was about 27 years old at that time. And in spite of the situation at that time. And we all can understand what was the situation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu are in the cave. All the kuffar of Quraysh are looking for them. There is a prize of hundred camels for anyone who would bring any of them back 
life or death. And yet, she would go over there and give them the food. As we know, the kuffar of Quraysh, they did not even like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immigrating to Medina. Why? How would it hurt them? Let him leave, go somewhere else. But their animosity was against the deen of Allah. And they did not want the deen of Allah to exist anywhere. So they said we cannot even allow him to go to Medina because then he will be inviting people to this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was denied when they were surrounding his home. They didn't know that he will be leaving. And surrounding his home with a plan that tonight we all together will attack him at once. And we'll just finish him. And they had selected one person from each clan so that Banu Hashim will not know who killed him and they won't be able to fight all of these clans together. How can one clan fight all of those clans of Quraysh at once? So they will just have to give up. So under that plan, they were surrounding his home. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course, was making his plan. وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ They were making their plan. Allah was making his plan. وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ Allah is the best planner. Remember this ayah and similar ayah have been repeated three times in Al-Quran Al-Kareem. About Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about Sayyidina Salih alayhi salatu wa salam and about Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. And in all three times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proves to us that he did not allow the kuffar to even touch that Prophet of Allah. We know about the hijrah and I'm sure most of us have heard the story of Sayyidina Salih alayhi salatu was salam. And then when we come to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam, many times you hear that they captured him, they tortured him, they dragged him, they spit on his face and they did this and that to him. Allah says no. Wa makaru wa makar Allah. They made their plans and Allah made his plan. And Allah's plan cannot be so weak that they can do all of this after Allah will make his plan. So here we find the same words repeated for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ They made their plan, Allah made his plan. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was reciting Surah Yaseen, he left his home. And is reciting the ayah, وَجَعَلْنَا مِن بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِن خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ We put a barrier in front of them, a barrier behind them. And we took their eyesight away so they could not see. Or in fact, فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ We put a covering in front of their eyes so they could not see. While reciting this ayah of Quran Al-Kareem of Surah Yaseen, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam throwing the dust on their head and he left. The story is long. I don't want to go into the detail of the story of the hijrah. In the morning when Abu Jahl came out of his home celebrating, thinking that this is what today he will hear that good news according to him, and he finds out that no, they could not find Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he escaped. 
and he left the town. Abu Bakr knew who would have some information. And right away he went to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's home. Abu Jahal knew where he would get the information. And right away he went to Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu's home. He knocked at the door. And this girl answered the door. He asked her where, his fa- where her father was. She said, how would I know? And this is a beautiful way of answering. By asking another question, how would I know? It's not that I don't know. Many times we don't look at the proper wordings of the uh, hadith. And of course, he, now he realizes that even Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu left. And out of un- anger and rage, he slapped her on her face so hard. That her earring f- flew away and fell off. But even at that time, Asma radiallahu anha did not apologize to him. And she was holding to the truth. And she knew that whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing was not a crime. He's inviting people to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asma radiallahu anha was one of the sabiqat, one of the first people to embrace Islam. About whom Allah says in Quran, radiallahu anhum wa radu anha. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Asma radiallahu anha to be the daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu who is a Siddiq. And her husband was Az Zubair bin Al-Awwam radiallahu anhu, one of Al-Ashrat al-Mubashrah. Her son was Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anhu who was known as Hamamatul Masjid. This was his title. Hamamatul Masjid. The pigeon of the Masjid. Because he used to spend such a long time in his Salah, he was a type of Sahabi. That other Sahaba used to envy him for his Salah. As he would stand during Salah, there are so many hadiths and narrations that talk about it. That birds used to come and sit on him thinking that this might be one of the other idols that they used to see before. Birds were used to seeing idols before. And is standing still without any movement at all. And he would stand for hours without any movement. And birds will be sitting on his head as he goes to sujood. They are sitting on his back. Sahaba, Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een whose ibadah have been admired by Allah, their salah has been admired by Allah in Qur'an. And they used to admire Abdullah bin Zubair for his salah. Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anhu was the first child that was born in Medina Munawwara to Muhajireen. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in were very happy about his birth. And the reason was, after the migration, for some months, Muhajireen had no children. And the Jews in Medina Munawwara, they started spreading a rumor that we have did a special magic on these Muhajireen, they will never have children. And some of the Sahaba started getting worried, because of course they have that's there, magic is there, the effect of it is there, so the man has done, done something. When Abdullah bin Zubayr radiallahu anhu was born, all the Muslims were very happy, and of course those Jews who were spreading these rumors were very upset about it because they knew now Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een know that whatever they have done did not work on them, or they would know that these people were lying. 
Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anhu, of course, now we know he was a young child during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. His mother, most of the time, would just send him to the masjid, go and spend the time with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. One day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam had some of the blood taken out. <coughs> and he gave it to Abdullah bin Zubair. That Abdullah go and throw it away, but at a place where no one would step on it. Take it away somewhere far. Abdullah bin Zubair, when he took it, he started thinking, where am I going to throw this? And he said to me at a very safe place. Young boy, he doesn't know too much about anything. All he knows is that this is the order of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I love Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he came back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam asked him, where did you throw it? He said, I drank it, Ya Rasulullah. Did you drink the blood? Yes, Ya Rasulullah, I did it. But don't you know you weren't supposed to drink a blood? I didn't know Ya Rasulullah, I thought it was yours. So therefore I'm allowed to. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to him he said that make sure you don't do these type of things. But he said to the people later on, that a person who has my blood in his body, the hellfire is haram on him. So now Asma radiallahu anha, her father is a Siddiq of al-Ashr al-Mubashara, her husband is of al-Ashr al-Mubashara, Zubayr bin al-Awam, and her son also got the same type of certificate from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immigrated to Medina Munawwara, her grandfather, Abu Quhafa, the father of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, who was not Muslim yet, he went to visit Asma, and he said, Asma, and he was blind at the time. He said, Asma, I think Abu Bakr must have taken all the wealth, all the money. And now you people will be suffering. So he left you people behind because he's kafirs. So he left you people behind and he left nothing for you people. How are you going to survive? What are you going to do now? He doesn't even have that much brain to, brain to think about you. He's just blind with his love for that Prophet, for that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He doesn't, he can't even think properly. Asma radiallahu anha. Of course, her tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Her faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Her iman. Did not allow her to tolerate any more of that. Quickly, she ran, Collected some of the pebbles. Put it under a sheet. And said to her grandfather, come touch this. When he touched it, he thought that's all gold and jewelry or whatever else. She said, see, he left all of this for us. There is no reason for us to complain. We are, alhamdulillah, we are doing good, alhamdulillah. And he was satisfied. Look at the iman of this young girl. That normally we would complain, or at least that's the grandfather, okay, now we will need your support. She says, no, alhamdulillah. We are in good hands, our father has done enough for us, and he has done good for us, and you don't have to worry about us. Tawakkul, an iman that she learned at the house of a siddiq radiallahu anhu. And look at the tawakkul of a siddiq who took all of his wealth because he knew Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will need it on his way to Medina, and he will need it in Medina because he has nothing with him at that time. And he spent everything on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, many of the narrations tell us that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bought the land of the masjid, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and he insisted that he's going to buy it. The people of Medina wanted to give it to him as a gift. He refused. He said, no, I will buy it. And finally, when Abu Bakr saw that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is insisting on buying, he went quietly to him, Ya Rasulullah, here, this is your money, buy it through this money. And that land was bought through the money of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And we can see what did as-Siddiq do for himself. 
that up to this day, every salah being performed in that masjid, he's getting his share from those salahs and every ibadah that is being performed over there. Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anhu, the son of Asma radiallahu anha, in the year 63, he was chosen to be the Khalifa of Hijaz. And after that, of course, Abdul Malik bin Marwan opposed him. This was after the time of Yazid. And then Abdul Malik bin Marwan opposed him. And there was a war. Abdul Malik sent Hajjad bin Yusuf to attack him in Makkah Mukarramah. And most of the people left him because Hajjad bin Yusuf came with a large army. Abdullah bin Zubair went to his mother and he said, Ma'am, all the people have left now. What do you think I should do? She said, son, why are you asking for? What do you mean by asking this? He said, ma'am, I have few people left with me. If I don't give up, I don't surrender, then these people will be killed too. And I would be killed too. In order for us to save ourselves, this might be the only choice. She said, son, if you are fighting for the deen of Allah, then why to give up? And if it was for your own to get your position and get that seed and that uh, for, for your own ego, then son, no one is worse than you on the surface of the earth. He said, no, it was for the sake of Allah. But ma'am, my fear is they might cut my body into pieces and you will not be able to have patience to see my body. She said, son, what are you talking about? The goat never worries of what will happen to it after it will be killed. Skinning the goat does not hurt it. It won't hurt it anymore. So don't worry of what happens after you. Just worry of what you do at your life. Iman. Tawakkul. And of course we know Hajjad bin Yusuf. Finally he attacked Makkah Mukarramah. And Sayyidina Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anhu, at about the age of 72, he was murdered. He was one of the strongest of the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. A very special quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with. His power and strength was extraordinary. And many of the Sahaba believed it was because of that blood. During the time of Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, King Hercules sent a very strong person and saying that see if you have anyone that can challenge the strength of this person. And of course a person who's always in the wars, always in the battlefields and might be doing a lot of exercise and all of that's his life. That's all he knows in his life. Building his body and muscles. And as we know when people devote their lives for that, this is all they know. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu called Abdullah bin Zubayr radiallahu anhu and said, this is what King Hercules sent this man for. Now calling who? A person who's known as Hamamatul Masjid, the bird of the masjid, this is the pigeon of the masjid. And this is something that we really need to know and keep in mind about Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. We think doing something else will prevent the person from ibadah and ibadah will stop the person from everything else. A totally wrong concept. Islam is a moderate deen. Allows us and in fact teaches us to, can, to do all of these things at once. At the same time. Our ibadah would not stop us from getting into any other fields of the life. So he called Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anhu. Now if that person would read the history or will try to study who Abdullah bin Zubair is and he would look at his title, he would think that I can just defeat him in a minute. Because he's Hamamat al-Masjid. This is the person who spent most of his time in the Salah, in the Ibadah of Allah. He's fasting most of his life. So he won't know 
where is he going to get his, his strength from? He's fasting most of the time of his life, then his rest of the time is in the masjid. Abdullah bin Zubair, when he approached that person, he said to him, I'll give you one of the two choices. Either you sit down, and then I will pick you up, I will take you away from the, your position, and you try to stick to that place. Or, I would sit, and you try to move me from there. He said, that will make the decision, and everyone will know it. So that person said, okay, I'll sit, and you try to move me. And as he sat, and just with one move, and that person was up in the air, he couldn't believe himself. So he asked, who this person is? I said, his name is Abdullah bin Subair. Anything more? He couldn't find anything more. So he said, let me then see what did he do. So he said, now let's switch it the other way. You said, I'll, I'll do the same thing to you. And it says that person could not even move him an inch from his place. And we know, as Sahaba Ridwanullah said that it was the blood. And we know, Anbiya alayhim salatu salam, they have been given such a power, such a strength, that normal people can never have that type of strength. In fact, some of the hadiths talk about the strength of hundreds of those of the people of Jannah. Not of normal people, of the people of Jannah. And this is why when there was a person called Rukana, he was considered to be one of the strongest people of Quraysh. Once he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa if you wrestle me down, then I will believe in you. Come on. This is not a way of believing in a prophet that he's, you, you consider him as a wrestler and he wrestles you down. And another person who's fast running, you say, if you run faster than me, then I would do it. And this is not what the prophet of Allah is for. And if you bring some gardens, if you make gardens in Mecca, then we will believe. If you bring some fountains in our town, then we will believe. He's not an architect. He's not for these purposes. He's not a contractor. He's not a wrestler. He, she, he, he's teaching you the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk to him about proofs about his deen, of what he's saying, and he will prove to you. But this is what Rukana said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in a challenge. And right away Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got up. And within a move, Rukana was down on the ground. He couldn't believe himself. And he did it three times. After the third time, Rukana said, I think it's part of your magic. And he still did not believe. If Allah misguides someone, that person can never get the hidayah. So, Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam, Allah blessed them with that strength. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, just punching the man, Quran, you read it in Quran, just punching the man, and the man was out of this world. And, just for us, as a piece of information for us to know, this is why we find, even in the previous books, and with all the changes that are there in the Old Testament, New Testament, when they talk about Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam, they talk about Anbiya having many wives. It's one of the reasons that they can have it, they can handle it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them that ability. Physically and spiritually, spiritually in every way. So, Asma radiallahu anha, after she saw her son, after Abdullah bin Zubayr was murdered, Hajjad bin Yusuf went to Asma. And he said, see how Allah punished his enemy just to hurt her feeling. Telling her about her son, that see how Allah punished his enemy through me. She said, Hajjaj, she's over 100 years old. Hajjaj, remember one thing. You spoiled his world, his life. And he spoiled your akhirah. Still, I think my son is the winner. Hajjaj couldn't control his anger. He said, I'm going to pull you with your hairs and drag you over the streets of Makkah Mukarramah so people will know that you are the one who brought, who, who, because of your upbringing, he was a, uh, you, grew, you, you brought such, such type of person into the Ummah. She said, Hajjaj, remember one thing. If you want to do that, go ahead and do it. But you know 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, he would take that zulm that you have done to my son, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not tolerate you raising your hand over a woman of this ummah that was raised in the house of a Siddiq. Try to do it, O Hajjaj, and I challenge you, you do it, and see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would do to you. I will love you to do it, so that you will become a lesson for the ummah. And Hajjaj got scared right away. But look at the iman. Look at the faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the iman and the taqwa that he blessed the sahabiyat with. And may Allah give all of us tawfiq to learn our deen and iman and taqwa and tawakkul from these sahabiyat. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us of those whom with whom Allah is pleased and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimina wa al-muslimat wa akhiru da'wanan alhamdulillahi wa kalani. Thank you.